All right. Uh, do you see the financial summary? Yep. All right. This is where we're at. All right. So let me write some of that down. So you got income 10097 Okay. And then um, why don't you scroll just a little bit so I can see what that cash flow is. Okay. 760 Awesome. All right. You can go to the the debt page. All right. So no debt tool at the moment, correct? Uh, just I am in approval for a $40,000 HELOC that's just uh, got to get finalized. All right. $40,000 second position HELOC, correct? Correct. Awesome. I should have that in the next uh, 14 days. Okay, cool. What state? Michigan. Awesome. And the uh, name of the bank? That would be Key Bank. Okay, awesome. We all know Key Bank. Cool. Helped many of my clients. And did they uh, give you an estimated rate? I look. I think we're going to be right around three and a half percent. Is that an introductory rate? Okay. It's, it is an adjustable rate, but right, it's right. not introductory. I'm okay. right at. I should be right at prime. Right. So three and a half variable rate. Right. Correct. Awesome. Cool. 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 All right. Um, let's jump over to the uh, income and assets. Just want to see what we're dealing with. Any emergency fund type account or savings yeah i got all kinds of savings uh so i'm coming from the dave ramsey I've, I've done dave ramsey grandpa ramsey for 15 years um so i have basically no extra income because all of it all that savings line items for like long-term stuff that's all built into my budget so that's why i don't have much of a, a cash flow left over okay. because i have so much for savings but i do have uh probably you know i have access to sixty, seventy thousand dollars liquid at any given time mm -hmm. So are you using the, the sinking funds method? Yes. You, yes. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. And you said, but what I want to do, I, I, my question, my big question tonight is I have a couple of, um, a couple of loans and I'm thinking I should just take some of that liquid cash that is sitting in my vault, not even in the bank and actually just pay those things off and, and double my cash flow plus. So that, that's really kind of where we're going. Okay. Go back to the debt column. I want to see what, which, which uh, loans you're talking about. All right. So I have a tractor loan. Uh, it's two ninety five a month. There is 0% interest on that. So I don't think we're going to be touching that for a while. That's a seven. That's I got like 80 months left on that. So basically um, it's 0% for the life of it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So that wouldn't make sense to touch that. Just keep it. It's just, but Cool. The 403B loan, I can't pay off until I get my uh, debt tool in place. And then I'll be happy to use my cash to cover that. I don't even need to use the debt tool for that, but no, right. I, would, I would prefer to have the debt tool in place before I take my emergency money and utilize it. But that would net me $690 a month cash flow right off the bat. Okay. You're paying five and a half percent basically back to yourself with that. Yeah. Like three and a half. They take, uh, I think they take 2% is what they're taking. Okay. I believe that's simple interest. Is that correct? Yes. I just can't pay it off. I can't accelerate the payment. I have to do it all at once. Gotcha. So you can't like chunk at it. It's either pay it off in full or, or pay the monthly payments. Got it. And then the exactly. EIDL. Um, and, and that one I haven't touched because it has been deferred, but I, I really want to, I'd like to just capture that cash flow and use the HELOC, use the debt tool for chunking that off. Uh, if that makes sense in your, you know, after talking to you. Yeah, yeah. 3.75 amortized to 3.5 simple interest. There's obviously a, a gain there. Not much. There's a gain. Um, I'm curious. Are those simple interest or are those, because it's a, I thought it was amortized on a 30 year. It is. The EIDL is amortized. I was talking about the HELOC being simple. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. So, but in regards to EIDL though, the interest that you pay on that, I believe you might be able to either deduct all of that. And then I, if that's the type of loan that I'm thinking of, I've, I've heard certain clients of mine getting those types of loans, SBAs, EIDL somewhat forgiven. Um, so I would want to get yeah, more information that on that. I'd want to get more information on that before I just wipe it out if if the whole thing is going to be forgiven or portion of it yeah this particular one uh from what i've found so far is not forgivable it was a straight out loan straight low out interest loan. loan um so here's my situation between those two loans i have enough cash sitting in my checking account to to cover them where i wouldn't even need to use the debt tool right i want the debt tools so that i could pull that money out for those sinking you know, those sinking fund items. And basically if I do that, I can add another seven, 
$800 a month cash flow and just start paying myself back to those sinking fund items. That's kind of where my thoughts are. All right. So let's look at the, the value of taking cash to pay off relatively low interest debt uh, to gain a cash flow of around a little over 800 bucks at 790, 840, right? EIDL and 403B. What occurs if I use the cash to pay off the two and I get the cash flow gain of 840? From that point on, you're saying because that money was used for sinking funds that you're simply just going to pay yourself back over a period of, you know, X amount of years or whatever. Yeah, I would add that 840 to this 760 and that gives me, I think it's like right around $1,600 a month uh, cash yeah. flow. Right. And then with the HELOC, what is your... That you, wouldn't... That's something about... It wouldn't even be used. Right. You don't it wouldn't even be used. used unless you have a better... Unless I could attack my mortgage because I'm, I'm only six, eight months into a new mortgage, a new 30-year mortgage. So I'm right at the front end of that uh, $440,000 mortgage. So there's quite a bit of interest savings to be had. I just don't know what to do with like prioritizing these three things. Yeah, with the with the current mortgage, what's the rate on that? 2.87. Okay, it's a very low rate. Super low, but the interest is super high. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The um, 2.8 2 in the beginning is higher than 3.5 simple interest. We can manipulate yes. 3.5 to actually play pay around one percent interest um for the for the times that we actually chunk and throw at that but it's not something that we would do for the entirety of the mortgage in, in my opinion in this current environment that we're in today there's two routes that you can go there's two routes that you can go you can you can go the simple route of just becoming debt free that'll take you roughly five to seven years on average or less depending on how much more income you bring in and cash flow etc we all get that or i can look at servicing the debt that i have and then taking the cash flow along with the debt tool to figure out how i can generate either a second stream of income or another cash flow vehicle that in the same amount of time that it would take me to become debt free that I would have increased my income by a multitude, a multiple factor of say anywhere from two to 10 times where I'm at today. And then at any given time, I can just write a check and pay off all the debt. So not only would I be debt free five to seven years from now, but in that five to seven years, I also created a stream of income that is now servicing my lifestyle, my living expenses, sinking funds, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So both have their pros and cons. Obviously option one is the safest, but is it the most effective, right? That's the real question because all we're doing here, if we're just looking at velocity banking to simply pay off these debts, we're, mm -hmm. we're, we're gonna win in terms of what we pay in interest. But what ends up happening is we lose to inflation and taxation over the next five to seven years. So even if I recouped all this cash flow five to seven years from now, it's going to be as if I have $760 in cash flow today because my cost of living and taxes would have increased at a higher rate than the amount of money that I actually saved in interest, right? So that is very, very hard to actually map that out in terms of how inflation affects the cash flow. It can be done. It's just a little bit, can be a little bit confusing. I don't know. It kind of confuses me a little bit. But what I have been seeing over the last year or two is this uh, constant, there's, there's a conflict going on as to figuring out, do I just focus my time talent treasure efforts money on paying off all this debt or am i in a position where the debt isn't hurting me financially i can just service it it costs me this much points percentage points per year which results in x amount of thousands of dollars can i earn more than that in the same year is that a possibility if it's a yes, then we may want to consider instead of liquidating the, the, the capital that I have and throwing it at this cheap debt, call it right. Very, very low rates is what you're dealing with. Okay. You're going to get a win, right? Obviously we get that cash flow today, but now I'm 
50,000 or so less in, in, in capital. So if an opportunity arose or some, I might be strapped for cash in, in that event, right? Um, so, so far, have I been confusing you or am I providing some kind of a, a thought process? Well, here, kind of, kind of here is, uh, here's something that's this, I don't know if you can see the screen here. Yeah. This is it. a concern of mine here. Elder care rent. Uh, so we currently house an elderly man uh, that I'm a guardian of. He's 82 years old. So one of my concerns for, for my situation is I need to be able to increase my income to cover that number should he pass away. Okay. So that was that's really a motivation for me to free up cash flow. But I also am an entrepreneur. We do have a side business. Yeah. We do have opportunity to earn more, but it's not scalable. I need to actually find a different business um, that would be scalable. So I'm totally open to that 10 xing in my income. I don't have that idea yet, um, but I have the capacity to do that mentally, physically, whatever. Beautiful. But I, that's that's one of my concerns. That 2400 right there. Right. If that, that goes could tomorrow. go away, that could go tomorrow. And now now things are tight. If that went tomorrow, wouldn't it be better to keep the cash than to put it to the debt because my cash flow only goes up to around 17 or 1800? So yeah, but that 1800 closes the gap to 2400 a lot faster than me sitting on 50 grand and then just using that up $2400 a month. You know, that would be my only other al alternative if it happened tomorrow. The uh so, you, you actually would be able to extend the gap a little bit longer. If I kept if I held on to the cash, I lose that $2400 tomorrow, at least I can gauge the the timeline for so I just say all right, let me go. Uh, Let's come back to the board. Here. It's 20, yeah, like 25 months. It's not very long. Well, to me, that's plenty of time compared to, uh, let's, let me make sure I write these numbers down right. So that's 2,400. See, I could make up the $600 difference, $700 difference. If I had the cash flow tomorrow that I would gain by liquidating those debts, I can make up that, that difference with my business income. There's enough extra in there to, to handle that. I would okay. then be able yeah, to new information. sustain. I would just then be able to sustain indefinitely. Yeah. And not okay. have to, I, then I'd have to figure out how to pay myself back. That would be the only issue uh -huh. for those sinking fund items that I borrowed from to pay those debts off. So I'm kind of in a, a weird space. Let's go to the debt again. I want to see those two loan balance amounts real quick. I just want to write those down. So we got 31061 and then we got 24 flat. Now the sinking funds you have built up around 60 grand. Of that 60 grand, how much gets used in a year from the sinking funds on average? Um, probably 30 grand, maybe half of it. Okay. I've never mapped that out exactly, but I'm just, I'm estimating. Yeah. Now, 24,000, I'm just gonna bring it back to the board here. So 24,000 plus 31061, that'd be 55. So I basically completely drained the whole 60. Let's just say I go that route and I got about five left. Afterwards, 690, 150, got an increase of 840. Plus so my initial 760 that I currently have. Right. So 760 plus 840, we're at 16. Yep. Okay. So what you're saying is from your current business, you could come up with another eight to break even. Yes. Yep. If I was to lose that $2,400 tomorrow. Now, from the business, is that a simple, uh, are we doing a distribution? Is it, are you increasing your salary? How, how is that? Uh, I'm, it's a vending business. So it's a cash business that um, it, it generally produces more than I need, uh, than I budget to live off of. Okay, got it. So you're saying that you're you're actually making more than what was displayed here. Um, yes. And that money is just sitting in the business account. You can actually take from that at least an additional 800 just to break even. Yeah, if I if I had to, I could do that. Right now, I just, I, use, I save it as a business, uh, you know, emergency fund, I guess. Yeah. So then in my head, let's say we went that route. I use 
55 of the 60, I got about five left. I bring the cash flow up to 1600. I lose that income tomorrow, that additional income that's coming, that 2400. I lose that tomorrow. I'm now gonna take 800 from the business that I have to uh, generate a cash flow of 2400 technically, but now I'm at a zero. I'm gonna, I'm at a pure break even, or I'm at a break even point. Now I maintain like I maintain my current lifestyle and that's and that's it. Yeah. Yeah, maintain maintaining current lifestyle. Maybe some maybe some of your expenses actually lower because there's one less person in the house. So to a degree things might go down dollars and cents here and there. Um but conservatively we're at a zero cash flow break even, but you told me earlier we're using 30 grand a year from the 60s. So what would what would yeah. happen in your That's mind then? Would we have to dip into this, the HELOC at that point? Yeah, that would be a problem uh, to have no additional cash flow. So I would, in that situation there, we would do what we did in COVID and our, our budget would go bare bones oh, and okay. we would we would really we would really trim it down. Gotcha. So there's some room there. If we had to, you know, we're not going to eat out ever. We're not going to vacation. We're not going to do the things that are built into that conservation budget. mode got it exactly so i could probably create a little bit more on uh, now there's no doubt that i need to 2x at the minimum i need to 2x my income i have to do that that all i'm praying to god is for is the idea yeah and the uh talk to me about the current business that you had you say you had a vending business that's the vending yeah. machines right the, the soda machines and the snack machines yeah. that's the only business you yeah. got correct okay and that type of um, business, is it a matter of you needing to simply acquire more machines to make more money? Or is there a component of you like working more hours or something like that to facilitate making sure the machines are operating? Like kind of break that down for me. So How do we make more money in that? A little different than the pop and the snack that you're thinking about. This is toy capsule uh, vending machines. These are quarter machines. Uh, right. It could be a quarter to a dollar. And they're typically in grocery stores, restaurants, you know, the bigger scale bulk type of uh, bouncy ball, gumball, those kinds of things. So it's a, it is, I would say, a, an industry that is dying just by virtue of the fact that it's coin based and prices are rising and we can only raise, we only have certain, uh, we can only set those mechanisms up to a dollar. Like that's the, that's right. the most you can charge. So I don't see that as a long-term sustainable business. It's It'll continue to, I'll just ride it out, enjoy it as I've done it 15 years. That's not my primary source of income. I am a pastor, so I'm full-time at my church. This is in addition to that. Um, so I'm basically living off of two incomes right now. Right. I, I do need to have a different idea though to 2X my, in order to 2X my income, I, I would need a different business model. Gotcha. So the being a pastor is the mainstream of income. Gotcha. How do I make more money as a pastor? Not like, happening what, are my, you, what are you currently doing now that that makes money? I'm salaried. So there's no, there's gotcha. no more the church. Just, okay. Yeah. You're I'm the salaried head. pastor. I'm not the head. I'm one uh, associate. Okay. How does that church work? Is it a, uh, a multitude of pastors or is it a one head pastor like a bishop or yeah something? there's a head pastor and then there's like four associates that are also and called pastors I'm, yes for okay, uh, each one is over a di different area so i'm over the worship and technology we have children's youth and uh, young adults got it, got it got it so the thing is i've been at that i've been at this church for 22 years i've pretty much tapped out income wise what what the, what's going to be available which is fine i mean i love what i do but i do need i do need to find a business idea that will be able to to 2x me at least yeah so you said you're over you oversee tech and what else worship like music. so i lead all the music gotcha. yep i do all I'm, I'm the worship pastor okay all right now in this world in, in my head uh, and i don't i don't know everything here but if I wanted to increase what I bring in from my works, I'm, I'm thinking that I need to get on social is one route. And how do I scale the, the church to receive more members? Would that increase my pay from the heads, the ones that handle the finance department? Would that increase my value in it if I brought more members and more attention, more eyeballs, more subscribers, uh, especially on the, you know, in the, uh, the the marketing side of things. Like, would that be a, an addition 
to tech and worship or are your hours sort of stretched there? Yeah, no, there, there's a cap in our uh, organization on what you can earn. So it doesn't really matter what I do. So I can work more no matter what, but you're at that, you're at the highest yeah. there is. There's no going higher than that. Yeah, you got it. That's why I started a business. Got it. Can, can I do something for the church, but it's mine. And for example, say it's on social media, like I build a, a platform of some sort, or maybe I take the worship team and I get them hired out to do gigs and you facilitate that and receive uh what is it called? I don't want to say a commission, but a, uh, a fee, some kind of fee. Yeah. I think the easy, the, the only idea that's come to my head would be to, to start my own platform, say like on a Kajabi platform and actually begin to build a course uh, for other church worship teams, especially smaller churches that are lacking resources, lacking training, and I begin like to actually, because I have, I have a lot of experience. So I, I've taught other worship teams how to do worship, how to grow their team. I, I've never thought about monetizing that and building a course um, similar to kind of what with the platform you have. Yeah. That would be the natural use of my gift um, that could increase income that would be completely outside of the church uh, control or realm and that's fine i have there's no issue with that yeah that's that's how my mind's working because the, the moment i i hit a kind of like a wall here in in the church where it's like no matter what i do i'm not going to be able to earn more for the for the work so i have to get a little creative here and either create courses on tech for the church tech for the church right how many churches still don't know how to do a zoom meeting you know or zoom worship meeting um so many churches were forced to go online so i'm pretty sure there's a lot of stragglers out there in terms of smaller sure. churches that just have no idea how to engage in the in the online world um so they're missing out on that whole audience of lost people or people looking for the right, right church so to speak and uh and they can't find the church because that church doesn't know how to get on social media and be an influencer right so it seems to me like there's no bind uh that you you can retain your pastor position but you can do these other things that brings right. attention to the church but yeah. you're getting paid over here Right. So that doesn't exactly. seem like a conflict. Um, no, and I have the time flex of what I do have while I have a cap. I have complete autonomy for the most part I, uh, of my time, which is worth a lot. Okay. That's why I stay. All right. Cool. Yes. Now, I'm the really... other thing is one of the dreams in my heart, if I had the if I had an opportunity is I would buy a storage facility because I think that's one of the most brilliant brick and mortar models that I've seen out there that require almost no effort. And around yeah, our and where we live, staff. they're they're hundred percent full everywhere. So that would be something cool. I'd love yeah. to do something like that. But. And this idea is great. I think it requires a lot of debt to do it, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Which Properties is not are a bad thing at all. Indian. It's not a bad thing at all, in my opinion, because I think right now getting access to debt is probably easier than ever before. So that might be something really worth looking into building proper business credit positioning having a business plan to whether it's getting in one of those like a franchisee type of uh position or a standalone type of a storage but i, I don't know how well that would do because then you got to do all the marketing to that versus being a, a franchisee kind of get all that branding and stuff uh, oh no i'm talking about i'm talking about buying an existing uh, existing business. okay that makes sense it's yeah. already yeah I mean, you're going to pay a million, million and a half, but you know, you're going to have 20 to 30,000 a month of uh, free cash flow after all expenses. I mean, it, mm -hmm. it, all you have to do is that tool, it's a no brainer and find the property that's for sale by a mom and pop, you know, uh, by this individual owner that and there's quite a few of them out there. Gotcha. So in my head, this is just, if I were in your shoes, this is how my mind works is I try to retain as much of my capital and cash for as long as I can to develop the cash flow vehicle that's going to sustain me for a period of time, right? So this is just one option. If I were in this position, it seems like I have some really cool avenues that I can go. I know for a fact 
the world of social media, creating content and creating courses is like a booming uh, e-learning, educational learning, online early learning. It's a huge industry right now. Very underrated. A lot of people think it's saturated. It is not. It is it is booming right now. So many people creating courses for the dumbest things and getting paid crazy money. So actually having a course that actually gives value to an industry that is lacking in that particular field could be a game changer for all different types of churches, right? So you don't even have to niche to one. You could niche one, but you'll end up attracting many when you do niche. So it's good to have that niche idea and we can discuss that. Um, I would give myself a time frame to map this stuff out. And I have my, my 90, 90, 90 day rule. It's a nine month strategy yeah. to create content, deliver a service, sales, marketing, paid. Now I got cash flow to supplement, get to a, a number that is it's going to make me feel safe. So while I do that, say I give myself a nine month window to achieve that, give myself a nine month window. And at the same time, I'm in the process of getting approved for this HELOC. I can just have that to the side. I don't have to use that right away. I got this 60. Don't have to use that right away. I know I'm going to be spending 30 from the 60, right? So I'll just take 30 off the top and have 30 right here liquid and say, okay, tomorrow, boom, I lose 24. All right, I'm at 760, right? So if I were to lose 24, let's see, cash flow would be negative 1640. All I would need is from the 30K each month. So I got 18 months, right? Did I do that right? I believe I did. So I got an 18 month window before this 30 runs out. After that runs out, I have this that I could dip into. And the thing with sinking funds is you, they're sinking funds on purpose because you're not necessarily spending all of it at right. once, or right. it's more of a, a gradual spend. So you're building it up, liquidating, building it up, liquidating, building it up, liquidating. So you still got the 30 and let's just say that 30 gets used in a, in a one to two year time frame, almost like that 18 months. So by 18 months, that should be gone or almost gone. Maybe a little bit's left during this whole time worst case scenario i made no additional money from the course i made and the social media presence that i've been building in those 18 months that means i did like really bad yeah. you have to do like really bad and i know people who are bad and they've made money like it's so okay. you got to be like really really bad but let's let's run it we did really bad it's 18 months now so it's say 20 25 ish almost or yeah, end of 2024. And I got this 40, I could start dipping into it to continue to cover the 1640. I could also do what you said, going into conservation mode that would create a little extra wiggle room to maybe not have to pull out 1640 each month, but maybe I'll need to pull out a, a thousand, you know? And maybe right. I do that for an additional six months. So I accrue about 10K of debt on the HELOC and to, reduce the interest all i gotta do is velocity banking which you're not increasing or decreasing the debt you're just putting money in taking money out and you're paying a much lower rate than 3.5 so you're paying like one and a half so there's really nothing happening it's kind of stalling you're you're just stalling and you're buying time to create the cash flow needed to to pay this back so it would take i'd have about like what you said earlier about a 25 month window to create at least an additional $2,400 a month. And in this model, well, Matt, so you're, Denzel, let me ask you a question. Cause you're, you're on this track and I just want to make sure I'm tracking with you. You're on this track. I think that says that your mo the most important thing to do would be to focus on increasing the income and actually not even pay attention to velocity banking. In the meantime, just pay your bills because Correct. the other track that I was on was, Hey, in that same 18 months, if I did, use the money that's just sitting in the bank doing nothing for me. I would have eliminated $30,000 with a debt with that 1600 bucks a month, you know, times eight, 19 months, I would have, I would have eliminated 30 grand uh, and paid myself back. So could I not do that and course create? You, you could, but we were just in this, we were just running in the event. I lose the 24, right? 
Gotcha. So because that may that may not happen for seven years, right? So I don't exactly. want to necessarily sit on that cash. Right. Oh, maybe I do. Maybe I do part of the cash. I don't know, but I I feel like I got thirty grand. It's literally long-term savings emergency fund. And I'm thinking, okay, if I have a debt tool, why not just pay off that and pick, capture that cash flow right now? Mm -hmm. I don't know. That, no, you're not, you're not wrong. Yeah. So let me just be clear. You're not wrong. It's not like wrong or right. It's we're, we're trying to solve for what is most effective for my cash flow in the position that I'm in today. And you're, you're kind of foreseeing some things. And the biggest thing that we're foreseeing is I could lose the $2,400 tomorrow or seven years from now or 10 years from now, right? Depends on how long that person, uh, you know, health wise is right. We don't, we don't, or, you know, I, right. Uh, but well, and here's the other, issue. the other thing is this, I, I still have my, I can always borrow against my 403B, right? There's another debt tool. Like more so if I pay it? that off, I can always take a loan out from that, right? That's my money. Yeah. I don't absolutely get approval for that. Yeah, um, I have sixty thousand in it, plus sixty thousand plus in credit card. That's you know completely open. So I have a lot of debt tool already in place. That that HELOC would just you know be another be another one. Yeah, I hear you. So now let's play the other route, which I think it's a hybrid of mine and yours, where. If I am going to pay off a debt, it's going to be the one for 690 and I'm going to leave the other one alone. Um, did I write the numbers right? 31 at 150 or is it 31 at 690? So 31 uh, is the one that right here, 690. It's at uh, five and a half. I get three and a half back into okay, my own I account. So it's basically 2%. I wrote that wrong. Okay. Yeah. So 31. All right. Yeah. So from my 60, I could take 30, 31 and wipe out that, recover this. That would be the only thing that I would do where it's I'm taking a little bit of what my thought process is and a little bit of your thought process. So step one. So let me, let me clarify. Let me clarify. I have 31 right now between the business emergency fund and my personal emergency fund. Yeah. I have 31 that's in addition to the 60. Oh, so 90 total. So I could, so it's, I could pay that off in with the cash I have sitting right now and not even touch my sinking fund items. Okay. So technically I have 90. Correct. Okay, cool. So new information. Great. So I have a total of 90. 30, I would, this is again, second option here. I would just pay off the 403B, highest amount of cash flow recovery there. So I'd have mm -hmm. 60 plus current 760. I'm not at a 1450, right? Let's say the, the, the 2,400 that we've been discussing, let's say we don't lose that anytime soon, right? Over the right. next few years, that that uh, uh, is secure for the most part. And over the next nine months, nine month window, using the 90, 90, 90 day strategy to create content, uh, marketing, sales, production, creating a new stream of income, essentially through course creation, social media influencing. Um, and then this is more of a, I would say a long-term approach um, depending on your knowledge of accumulating, managing your capacity to manage debt effectively through the business, that is not a skill of mine, but, uh, I do know of some, uh, resources to, uh, look into, um, in terms of, uh, getting the proper standing to acquire that kind of debt, to acquire that kind of cash flowing business. Right. Okay. But let's just stick here. Cause this has to do with the church and this is something that you love to do. You've done it for 22 years. So there's a lot of knowledge built up there that if I just documented the knowledge in the form of video, blogging, pictures, podcasts, you name it, um, right. to get the word out effectively, I think that could really cause a spark of motivation, inspiration, and a lot of other people. And you could possibly, possibly have a team backing you up to, uh, uh help offload the work but it's yours. So you're the one that right. receives the income from the monetization and from the course creation. And if there's anyone that you want to uh, bring in, you can always set up like affiliate links and stuff, but that's another conversation. So sure. I wipe out the 30, I get the 690, I'm at 1450. I get the HELOC and still I could opt out 
of velocity banking, right? Retain my sinking funds because if I'm not mistaken, the way you have it set up is your sinking funds is being replenished by this. The you already factored it in as an expense, correct? Right. So it's not from the cash flow that's gonna bring them bring the money back up once it gets used, right? So 30k gets used, but it's constantly being replenished, right? So I'm not necessarily running out. So I don't even have to touch that. Uh, and I can just have that there. I can have the HELOC there. If I want, if I want, I could do velocity banking. Let's see. Would it make sense to take that HELOC the and 24. utilize it? Yeah. That's what I was going to say because that, the structure of that is a 30 year amortized. Yeah. So when I looked at the table, I'm paying a on that 24 i think i'm paying 15 or 16 over the life of that loan if i waited 30 years probably double of what you what the yeah principle is, i don't right? want to do that no no that's wasteful not. right i agree so we could absolutely consolidate the 24 in the heloc and just to velocity banking while building a second stream of income and it really has no effect to the cash flow because the cash flow is in the HELOC. So it's always going to be available. So I didn't lose it, right? right? Um and then I obviously I have that 150 that's in the HELOC and basically the 150 becomes the payment on the HELOC itself, Got right? it. which is that's not bad at all. Um so that's would be something that we can absolutely implement where we do velocity banking on the 24. So we just simply consolidate the debt. We're moving 3.75 amortized to 3.5 simple interest. And then obviously we can manipulate 3.5 simple interest to anywhere between like below one and a half percent. All right. Well, here was my thought. Then, Lord. My thought was I have a, I always have a balance of 30 or 40,000 in my checking account. Yeah. That's getting zero interest. Why wouldn't I just drop that into the HELOC? And pay zero interest you and absolutely. just pay myself pay myself back over time correct that's that's velocity banking in a sense so you're essentially you can um oh i see what you're saying you got 30 in the checking so if i was to yeah move 24 right yeah just offset it so that there's no interest pay right. myself back over time pay yourself back over time you can absolutely do that too that doesn't hurt um, or because then if I need the money, I just write a check off of the HELOC. So you can absolutely do that as well. That's not a, um, an issue. I'm, I have, I'm not against that. Um, unless that money had a purpose, then maybe not. But it seems like, like you, like you said, money's just sitting there. So it's just sitting there. all you did was a simple, um, switch where you just moved amortized right. to simple. And then now you're paying zero on the 24 and you're financing yourself back the 24 uh from that checking account so again now if you go you that route me, if you go that this, route yeah you're not doing, you're not doing there was another bank. way if you said hey if you had 50 grand to work with you could create more than this 690 plus 150 by doing something with infinite banking or something like that where it would actually create more cash flow than that that would be i guess an option that i would be that i haven't i don't have any knowledge about so so let me just i don't know uh, if that's a third option i don't know if there's a third option yeah let me let's let's close this one just to say that um this so far seems more ideal for you right okay. 30 30 from the 90 wipes out the 403b right and the money is still there if i ever need it 24 yes. gets pulled from the heloc pays off eidl redirecting amortized to simple i essentially pay zero because i'll move 24 from my checking in one shot into the heloc and then no more velocity banking no need right you could you could just kind of hold off on that and strategize my next move which is i either use velocity banking to fund the next cash flow vehicle if i need to i may not even need to um, in terms of creating courses and getting on social media the barrier the barrier to entry is very low so i may not even have to do all that right okay um and if that was the case then the very next move if you can share your screen again 
uh, to bring up the, the debt, I want to show people. So after that, tra the tractor, um, leave that alone. And just to be clear, if you scroll up a little bit, there's no credit card debt, correct? No, those are all open. Any of those providing cashback rewards or anything like that? Yeah, I come, I use, uh, I put everything on credit, credit card every month. I Beautiful. just don't have a balance. Okay, yet. cool. So we already got that in motion. So you're recapturing offsetting costs, mm -hmm. reducing costs by running your bills to the credit card and getting cash back rewards. So that's wonderful. Only debt that remains is the mortgage, right? Yes. Now, since the rate is so low, you, uh, you could just say, uh, I'm just going to service that debt. Or you, you could do velocity banking using the 3.5, even though the rate is higher when what we actually pay is less than the 2.8. So we can absolutely do velocity banking on the mortgage with the HELOC while building that second stream of income. The only risk in that, uh, is the lack of capital from my HELOC because it was used, it was used to chunk at debt, right? And if we're okay with that in your position, that's not really too bad because we have plenty of funds in the sinking funds and we've got the 403B, which is at a zero balance. So there are other locations that we could pull from in the event I needed to help fund the uh, cash flow vehicle. If that was the case, I don't think you're gonna run into that issue. So if you wanted to push velocity banking a little further, you could say we can do velocity banking on house 40,000 times 66. I mean, I wouldn't use 40,000 chunk because I'm no, no, absolutely not. That's not a, that's not the rules, right? So, no, nope. so anyway, when I ran like the, I ran a scenario where if I put a $20,000 chunk on there, I save about 20%, 20,000 in interest in addition to my principal and, and then the months off. So it was like a, a hundred percent return on investment. I mean, it was a pretty, pretty impressive yeah. because I'm at the beginning of the, uh, Mm -hmm. of the mortgage you know it's the most advantageous time to do velocity banking at the top regardless of what the rate is because it's amortized and you're getting smacked very very early on so you can actually simply cancel interest right, right. from from ever even accruing by making a chunk so if you were to go that route here would be my range anywhere from 17,400 being my smallest chunk to as high as 26,400 and that's 66% or two thirds of 40 grand, and then cash flow times 12, 17, four. And that's not including the $150 gain because that got wiped out as well. So right. cash flow is a little bit higher. Uh, so just going off that number, you get 17, four. This would be your chunk range. And then you do velocity banking for the next six to nine months, bringing that line of credit to zero to then do the next chunk that can simply be on autumn you can basically have that automated any money comes in all goes to the heloc expenses on credit cards heloc comes uh, you transfer from heloc to checking checking pays the credit cards any bills that cannot be paid with a credit card you already know the deal comes right out of the checking account yep. you're good to go um and then you and I can absolutely strategize on course creation, social media. I mean, this is a fantastic idea uh, for the church specifically. There's a lot of churches out there that are essentially ghost. Nobody knows them. Nobody sees them. Right. Right. And you can, you can be, you know, someone who is in music, I'm sure you're good with words. Um, so you can absolutely take advantage of like, the the words on social media to attract a lot of attention audience to the content that you're uh, producing and it's gonna you know i yeah. think it's, it's it's a great idea and it definitely just need to love to spend time to hone in on it even more and go further um, and you're essentially creating opportunities for other churches to create revenues and if you're helping right. people make money they're gonna love you <laughs> or at least respect you at the minimal well and the other thing denzel i was thinking about this whole uh, I, I would love to dive deeper, uh, follow you on your journey of the self-supporting ministry because I am credentialed. Um, you know, what happens if I form an entity in the kingdom where I can begin to reduce my, use, utilize my home, which, you know, is like a seven grand a year just in taxes alone. I can begin to capture some of that by having things structured properly. There's, there's some gain right there uh, as you're kind of teaching us on that. So that's something I'm going to really be paying attention to. Uh, do I need to set up some kind of entity 
like that to yeah, operate this ministry out of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's something I'm absolutely working on myself is figuring out how I turn my whole entire entity corporation into an unincorporated association in a tax yes. accepted environment operating by rule of necessity as a 508c1a self-supported ministry right so it is, it is a very interesting arena when you start operating in kingdom because not only do we have to know kingdom believe in it we have the faith but now we have to learn the kingdom language right because we're not selling we're not buying we're not investing we're simply exchanging we're co-vesting we're coming together in common unity we're honoring each other we're not uh selling to each other we're honoring through an honorable rewards protocol in a royalty and relationship sharing covenant so we're learning all this language on top of that i have to be able to defend the jurisdiction by having the right legalities the right documentation to um, effectively distinguish myself from one jurisdiction to another right that's very very key um, yep. and then once we're in there we're we're tied to the whole kingdom as it as it stands today and so the whole kingdom itself is offering and providing opportunities such as real estate syndication you know cash value life insurance and other self-supported ministries that we can redirect our tithing essentially or giving to this jurisdiction and then our tithes are giving doesn't just pay light bills and doesn't just feed people right so the seed doesn't get spent but rather we're able to take the seed as a whole co-vest it create a cash flow vehicle first and then let the harvest feed the people pay the light bill pay the this bill and the that bill and the that bill and the et cetera et cetera it's brilliant so brilliant being able to tap into that while you're doing your thing is something that i'm i'm in that process of right now so what i do is what you guys all see here this is what i do all day long whether it's one to one one to many or uh pre-recorded content so i'm just doing what i do i'm in my gift i'm in my purpose great in addition, I'm able to point people to a honorable rewards protocol system where they go through an academy, they learn kingdom, they learn language, they learn jurisdiction, they learn ecclesiastical law, they become certified. Now they're an ambassador. Now they're doing the same thing that I'm doing, but I'm receiving royalty rewards for building up a disciple and then going out two by two by two by two by two by two like Jesus did in a sense, right? Uh, or I should say how Jesus commanded his disciples to go two by two, two by two, in that sense, to uh, baptize all the nations, essentially, and teach them the kingdom and the good news, right? Being the Great Commission. So being able to create that sustainable wealth, tax-free, right? Tax accepted because we're in, a, we're in a different jurisdiction, right? Meanwhile, being able to operate exactly how, what we're already good at. And then have that whole thing be tax accepted, tax free, completely tax free. Um, and now you're operating like the elite do, the ultra wealthy do. It's a, a different ball game. I believe that route may take a few years. That's just me from what I'm observing so far. It looks like that's going to take a few years to establish everything. In the meantime, my focus is just increasing the cash flow, increasing the income. The more income I can have, the more I can move it out of the jurisdiction, um, simultaneously finding people like you and others on the call that are willing to take the same journey so we can both be learning it and then teaching each other, essentially cutting down that timeline, right? Yep. So I think that's uh, really good stuff. Any questions? Um, it seems like we have a solid action plan i think that that second option was really good i liked it a lot i personally if i was in your shoes i would feel safe i'm paying off debt i'm increasing cash flow i'm saving money on interest i'm doing velocity banking and i am figuring out a cash flow vehicle that can essentially wipe everything out over the next few years right or at least at the very least we're trying to generate an additional $2,400 
in cash flow in the event I lose the 2400, right? Yep. Any Makes questions? perfect sense. Nope. I would, I'd love to let you uh, this will be answer recorded. anybody else's stuff. So, yeah, because you, uh, you can rewatch this, right? So, and I'll, I'll even chop it up to make it a little cleaner later down the road, but you'll have the raw and authentic footage for the meantime. Thank you. Yeah. Great.